You heard it, the headline. The latest twist in the battle to save the circle. We've been talking for the last several weeks about the Miami Circle situated here east of the Brickell Bridge. To preserve this area for present and future generations. We are so caught up in our everyday life with asphalt and concrete to have that continuum with human endeavor going back 2,000 years. And that's what makes a place really sacred. Part of my job as the county archaeologist was to do archaeological monitoring in areas of archaeological sensitivity. In 1998, I was driving over the Brickell Bridge in downtown Miami, and I happened to notice that where the Brickell apartments were located, there, there was heavy equipment, cranes and it was obvious that they were demolishing the buildings. The city of Miami as a city is a very young city. Incorporated in 1896, constructed out of dredge and fill. It was a city of entrepreneurs and millionaires. Henry Flagler was a great example of that. Guys like Michael Bauman, who knew a good deal when they found one, who knew how to squeeze the land and turn it into something that created a profit, created opportunity. So this was the history of Miami. The sense of heritage was one of development. And what we had found was a sense of heritage that provided a connection to the land that was over 2,000 years old. The only study to come back so far about the site says it could be 2,000 years old. More research is underway to determine what it was used for. In January of 99 is when the news came out they were going to do the dig, so I contacted uh, Bob right away. I asked him if I could participate in the dig that I had lived on that site and didn't know that and I, I would like to help. And being on that dig, I felt a tremendous connectedness to all the people and uh, uh, to the community, to Miami, whatever that spirit is of Miami. Uh, it was thrilling. Mr. T.L. Riggs came onto the scene as our project surveyor and he looked at the uncovered basin holes that we had found and he said, you know, this is a deliberate formation. This is an arc of a circle. And with his knowledge of geometry, he sat down and he did the math. And once we stripped the fill and started digging through the midden, we actually started to find more and more basins. So uh, Mr. Riggs's hypothesis was correct. There was a perfectly constructed circle of holes 38 feet in diameter. In the end of the day, we were able to save the site because there was a public consciousness that believed that for that moment in time, we had found something very, very important. My name is Yvonne Moyer, and I'm an art teacher at Miami Country Day School. My name is George Zamanillo, and I'm the curator of object collections at the Historical Museum of Southern Florida. Celebration at the Miami Circle site. Native Americans and others overjoyed at news that... The excitement had started and people had started to gather at the Circle. And so it was, um, it was a great experience. We were suddenly activists for the Circle. We began to see daily demonstrations. People began to come there after work. When they came over the bridge, they started honking. And I remember one day going to the, to the job site and the parking garage is next door for the existing hotel and there's a banner that's draped over uh, the edge of the wall to save the circle and there's dozens of school kids who have come out there to uh, show their support. Uh, as, we, uh, as we started to uncover this uh, structure, the whole world was curious about it. And every day we would get home and turn the news on and there was a story featuring us and what was going on in the community that it was clear that this wasn't going anywhere that easily. So it became very important for the state to make that determination. Ryan Wheeler led a team uh, that came down there to make an independent verification and documentation of the site. Our office, the governor's office, um, and I imagine all of the government offices in Miami and Miami-Dade County were, were flooded with um, emails, faxes, uh, phone calls from people not just in Miami but all over Florida and all over the United States and all over the world demanding that the site um, be preserved. And we were doing our, our work, our digging out and, 
and uh, shaking, uh, finding the artifacts. I did a lot of that. I found a couple of things. Of course, most people know the Mammy Circle for the circular feature that was discovered or carved into the, to the limestone bedrock. But there's about three feet of midden material, which is a trash uh, deposited by prehistoric uh, peoples here over thousands of years. So during excavations, we find all these different pottery and shell tool materials, and those are collected and sorted and analyzed. We took a tremendous number of samples and then radiocarbon dated those samples with the earliest dates going back to 750 BC. And once that circular feature was discovered, it really changed the face of archaeology in Miami and South Florida. And really later on we noticed across the nation. But this is a story that's gaining national attention. But its future is still subject to the shifting sands of money, politics, and lawsuits. The media was uh, just exploded with this information about what appeared to be a possible calendar or a Stonehenge-like feature found in Miami. It got on CNN, it was on the national news, it, it just took off. Many believe the circle has certain power. Today, thanks to Miami-Dade County Mayor Alex Pinellas, the circle gained the power of eminent domain. I simply cannot stand by and allow an important piece of this community's history to be destroyed forever. Miami-Dade Mayor will institute or try to institute eminent domain proceedings to halt development here and preserve the Miami Circle. Miami-Dade commissioners are backing a risky and controversial plan to preserve Miami's ruins. In the history of the United States, an eminent domain suit had only been filed once before to acquire an archaeological site, only once, and that was a site uh, in Illinois, I believe, for Cahokia in the year 1921. So the Miami Circle was the second time that had happened in the history of the United States, and the whole purpose of an eminent domain suit is saying, we are going to take this property because it is in the public interest. I am so thrilled that I'm so proud to be part of this commission today. We really did the right thing. We preserved this land for all the people, which is what the people wanted. These are moments that demonstrate a community's commitment and maturity. County of Miami, what they did today was an honor to our people to keep that alive. Now all the action turns to court where the debate will go on. Interestingly enough, although the Miami Herald was intensely covering the story day by day by day, as well as other local media, they did not have any interest in going to the courthouse, and that's where a major part of the story of the Miami Circle was unfolding. I, I like to think about it as sort of democracy in action. People said, hey, we don't want to see high-rises on this property. We, we want this preserved, and the elected officials said, that's, this is what people want. We need to do this. This decision coming down just two hours ago, less than two hours ago from Tallahassee, the state is stepping in to help save the circle. What little we know about the Miami Circle is enough for the state to designate $2 million from its historical trust to save it. It's all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Governor Jeb Bush and his six-member cabinet unanimously passing the motion in Tallahassee getting the ball rolling on so buying the land back from developers. What I see today is, is, is at least they listen to us and trying to do the right thing. And then they did close it. They put that pea rock all over in all those holes that we dug out with our toothbrushes and our little trowels. And... The importance of the overall discovery is that it wasn't just scientifically important. It was an important community touchstone. The Miami Circle discovery was a once-in-a-lifetime event uh, for, for us, for archaeologists, for Miamians, for everyone in South Florida. It has taken a long time for us to get to the point where now we see we're on the eve of the opening of the Circle as a public park. And many people have been very impatient with 10 years of waiting after spending that kind of money. But I look at it from a different point of view. If that site could sit there for 1,800 years, and certainly we can spare 10 more years to see it open and done right. We'll get to visit the site, uh, learn about the materials, and learn about what archaeology is, how the site was discovered, and what they found. If people just have the opportunity to walk around the area, their lives will be different.